When we start with the WHERE clause, notice here, I've, this is my very simple intro to MDX cube. We have a tuple that's got products and dates and a single measure. And when we create tuples, they can only contain one member per uh, dimension hierarchy. And so this is a very simple cube, and so uh, we just have the three items. Now, we fast forward, we start uh, changing this query to get, uh, let me get one more slide over here. With our uh, tuple, when we start moving things into axes, we cannot have an item on columns or on rows and in the WHERE clause in that tuple because collectively these things become a tuple. What is on columns and what is on rows and what is in the WHERE clause all together form this particular tuple on, on a on a intersection by intersection basis. So if we look at the query results here, we see the two measures on column, sales amount and order quantity. So when it when the formula engine is developing the tuples, it's looking at this current cell, the one that now contains the 66,000, and it says, well, that's the sales amount. So that begins the tuple, and then it tacks on these additional items that it finds in the WHERE clause to create the entire tuple, and at that point, it's able to go and retrieve the value from uh, the cube, which actually I look at that now, that picture, and my, my picture and my arrows don't line up. <laughs> that, that arrow should be... Um, pointing, or that highlighted cell should be the front where the sales amount is. Uh, so, but the point here is just that each of those um, cells then becomes a separate tuple. So order quantity here becomes out in 200 black, the 11-2008 order quantity, and so forth. Then when we add in rows, we have... Um, and we can just kind of continue this process. So here we have our there's still on columns, but now we've added a set of products, and this is product.products.members. So that means that we're going to get the all level as well as the individual products here. And so notice the where clause now just contains state. And so we have our products put on rows. That's one query. Our measures get put on columns. That's another query. Then we have all of these individual items, individual tuples that get created to reflect the, um, uh, the, the current tuple. So the very first cell here is all products, the 11-2008 sales amount. And then it would continue on to each uh, subsequent tuple. So it takes each item one by one from the columns, from the rows, and then the WHERE clause to construct that tuple. So I'm, I'm hammering this point because it's an important one to understand that all of those things go together. That when, and, and this I think is the biggest shift that, that you need to make when thinking about MDX as compared to SQL because a lot of folks will try to think about the WHERE clause uh, the way that it works in a transact SQL statement, and it's completely different. You have to think in terms of tuple construction. All right, so hopefully that all makes sense. So then we have uh, the various variations. So we can say um, select set on columns from a cube is equivalent to select set on zero. So we can reference our axes by number and zero represents columns and one represents rows. Why would you want to do that? Um, you would do that because uh, it, there might be cases where I've run into this where I've used uh, open query functions so I can write a select statement in T-SQL that uses an open query function that actually executes an MDX statement and returns the results as part of um, as part of a, a transact SQL statement. And that um, open query function has an 8,000 character limit on the string that we can use for the MDX statement. And so there are times when I look for every little edge that I can use to minimize the length of that string. So I have a question here is why is there no ampersand on the WHERE clause? 
uh, in this particular case, so the question here is in the WHERE clause, why is there no ampersand? And that's because um, in this particular cube, the, I, I can reference my dates, or any particular member, I can reference them by the name or by the key column. So let me open up this cube to kind of make this a little more uh, understandable here. So here I have the date dimension. Oops, I need to do that. I want to double click on that. So here's the uh, design of my database as soon as this dimension opens up. And so we're referencing the date attribute here. And the date attributes have uh, key columns and name columns. And if I look at the data here, we'll just explore the data so we can see the underlying data. in just a moment. You can see that we have uh, a date key here. So if I were to use this value structure, like 2007-01-01, I would use an ampersand with this value. Uh, but I wasn't using that, I was using what is the other column here? The date, full date alternate key. And so that uh, just has a different representation. And the way that you can uh, see the difference is if I'm in my um, management studio environment, we can uh, actually see within the metadata browser the difference between the two. So let me bring up this cube. We'll hide the object that we're here. And then when I go to the date and point to a particular date, you can see uh, the labels here. This is what's coming from that name column reference. Let me move my microphone here. <laughs> kind of slipping in my way, but you can, whatever you see in the metadata tree here, that's the reference that you can use without the ampersand, but notice when I hover over that member, I can see the key column reference with the ampersand, and it has a different structure. So one is the key column, and one is not. So hopefully that, that makes sense. If you need me to explain that some more, let me know. All right, so uh, so there's just two different ways of referencing things, and we use the key column reference. Uh, that's typically a best practice because it doesn't change, typically. The name column, we're at risk in our queries of um, names changing, although with dates I probably would not uh, have a problem with that, unless people wanted to see something different. See here we have the year, month, day format. Maybe the users come along and say, you know, we'd really like to see the month, day, year format.